So if you're just here to watch how to make checkpoints to duty, you should probably skip ahead a bit. I'm going to do a little intro for a while, get all sappy with you guys. So for anyone wondering, this is my channel where I'm going to make a bunch of tutorials just to teach you about game making in general. You're going to go over uh, programming, 3D design, and game design. Basically, most of the whole gambit. I don't know any sound stuff. I'm sorry. I failed you. But, for these first few tutorials, I'm going to be going over mainly Unity, because that's what I've been using for a while, that's what I'm more familiar with. Maybe I'll go over some Java in the future, some C++, don't get your hopes up on that though. Uh, Maya, the 3D program Maya, 3D program Blender, maybe some 3DS Max, if you guys really want, although I really would not want to go back to learning that one, just because I haven't done it in a while. Uh, but most importantly, I'm going to be going over the design process, right? And how to scope things out for you to start working on your projects. So for most of the tutorials in the series, at least in the beginning, you'll need to download Unity. Uh, I'm going to put up a link right now where you can go download Unity. You'll also need Mono Develop, but that is installed with Unity, so don't worry about that. You also need some kind of text writing program like Word or Notepad or something like that. You probably have it already. So I'm just going to put up a link. I'll just give you a second. Just give you a second to get everything ready. Oh, you're done? Awesome. Oh, great. Oh, man. So if you haven't done any programming before, I would suggest you look at this handy little page that uh, Unity has set up for everybody. Uh, it really helps with understanding what's going on in a lot of uh, in a lot of the videos I'm going to be putting up. Um, I'm going to try to explain everything as I do it, so you don't need to worry too much about the getting complicated things down, but. Uh, at least, you should at least probably know the basics of uh, programming when you get into this. Okay? You ready? So, I've gone ahead and gone into Word, and I've just made a little diagram of the logic behind what we're going to do. So this is how we want events to go down. We want the player to hit a checkpoint, and then when they... Uh, after they go through the checkpoint, when they die, they want to go back to the checkpoint. So basically what's going to happen is that when the player goes through the checkpoint, they're going to have their position reset to where the checkpoint is. The logic isn't too hard behind it, you know, I, I just thought this through a little bit. It's probably not the most efficient way to do it, but, you know, it'll work. It'll work. Very easily, I hope. I really hope I don't mess this up. That would be incredibly embarrassing. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up the actual level that we're going to do now, because that's kind of an important step in making everything work. So we need to go to File, go to Open, no, go to New Project, then we are going to go ahead and name our new project, I'm just going to call it, what should we call it? Let's call it, I don't know, checkpoints. Checkpoints, why not? Checkpoints, brah. Checkpoints, brah. Then we want to check the character controller. We don't really need anything else. Yeah, that's really it. Just check character controller. That's all we need. And Unity will go ahead and open your project for you, what just happened. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Unity... Unity made my computer crash. Well, more specifically, it made one of my graphics cards crash, uh, which then meant that I had to restart all my programs. Not my computer, though, so I'm back. Okay, 
Uh, we made our new project. That's the important part. Now we're going to go into... We're going to set up our level here. Uh, we don't really need anything other than like a floor and a pit. So we're just going to go game object, create other. We're just going to make a quad. You know what? We don't even need a quad. You know what? We're going to go into create other and we're just going to make a cube. If you go ahead and press R, that makes you go into the scale to tool, which means you can make things bigger and smaller, right? Uh, control Z goes back, and then you just flatten it out. Just flatten it out. Make it big. Flatten it out. Make it big. There you go. The middle point does all of them at once. These do each of the axes. You know? But we just want it like that. That's all we need. And then we're going to go ahead. Make another one, just control Z and control V to copy and paste, respectively. I'm going to make this one uh, be the actual pit that the player falls into. Okay, and make sure we see everything. We need a light, so I'm just going to make a directional light, which is, I guess it could be compared to the sun, kind of, in that it just casts a light on everything in the scene. Uh, we don't need this main camera. Go ahead and delete that. Um, and that's just, you click on it, press delete, and it does it. Uh-oh. Did I do anything? Okay. I didn't do anything. Good. Okay. So, if you go ahead down here, you'll see Assets. This is the Assets folder. This is where everything you need is. Go into Standard Assets, Character Controllers, and just go ahead and take the First Person Controller, and just go ahead and drag that into the scene. You'll want to make sure that it doesn't start inside the uh, plane. So we're just going to lift it up a little bit. And you can see right off the bat, if we just press play, look at that. We have a first person controller. Whoa! We're, we just made a first person game. Go home, make some money, ship it. It's gold. It's already good. This is all they need. Okay. And this play button up here makes it so that you can see what your uh it makes you play the level and then you can do pause and it will pause the game unpause it unplay you know pretty uh pretty straightforward with that kind of stuff so what we want to do is we want to take this i'll explain why i'm doing this in a little bit just you see this mesh renderer actually you know we'll keep the mesh renderer but just hit this is trigger right is trigger means that if we go ahead and play the level, all of a sudden, instead of us being able to, to, we go through it. Instead of us being able to walk on top of it, we go through the actual mesh. It means it's not a solid object anymore. But that's fine, because what we're going to do is make it so that as soon as we touch it, then we're sent back to where the checkpoint is. So we're going to make one more cube that's going to be our checkpoint. What is this checkpoint going to be? We're going to make it a little... We're going to make a little cube. Make it a little taller. Make it a little wider. Put it there. Maybe put it at like chest height so you can't jump over it. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit longer so you have some like running space. All right. Move the character back. And now for this one, we're going to turn off the mesh renderer. So you won't be able to see it. The mesh renderer is what makes it visible. So if you unclick that, then all of a sudden you can't even see it, right? It's just a little box. Um, we're just going to go ahead and rename this to trigger. So that we know we can, you won't be able to select it in the level because you can't see it. But here in the hierarchy, you could definitely select it. So that is good. And we're going to name this, we're going to rename that to uh, Death Pit. That's pretty, pretty fitting. Okay, we have our entire level set up. This is all we need. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the code for this. Uh, I haven't done anything to it yet. So now that 
we have everything set up. Oh, wait, hold on. One more thing. You see the player here? You want to select the first person controller in the hierarchy right here. Go to this thing that says tag, untag, and you want to go ahead and tag that player. And uh, that is the last thing, I swear. The whole scene is set up otherwise. So just go ahead and create folder. Call this scripts. We just want to, you know, keep this pretty organized here. And we're going to need three scripts. We're going to need a player script. We are going to need a checkpoint script. And we're using C sharp here. You can use, you know, you can use whatever you want in your free time. Maybe, like, convert it for me if you want. But we're going to use C sharp here. It's, uh, it's a lot more practical, and you can carry it over to other applications in the future. Heck, you can make a whole game just using C sharp if you wanted to. So I think it's a lot more practical. It has the whole uh, Microsoft development uh, community behind it. So, you know, they, there's some more documentation there. Uh, I think it's a little bit better, cleaner, neater, but, you know, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to show you the logic behind this. So, and then we want to create one last script, and we'll name this uh, accurately. We'll name it Death Pit, you know, for consistency. So, we are going to go into here. You know what? Actually, no, I was overthinking this. We don't even need... We don't even need a... Uh, we don't even need a player script. Yeah. Mm. No, we kind of do. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Open it back up. Just double click it. Should bring you back in the model development. Okay, so what you have here? Blank slate. This is a completely blank slate. Um, I just like to have everything a certain way, don't mind me. La, 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 la. So start is what happens when the level starts. So how it kind of happens is uh, start happens and then it starts updating. Update, it happens every frame. So if your game, uh, you probably heard the terminology thrown around FPS frames per second. Uh, if your game is running at 60 frames per second, that means that this update function is running 60 times per second. So you don't want to keep any really big actions in there. You don't want to write like a thousand codes, a thousand, thousand codes, thousand lines of code in your update function. That will probably slow your game down a bit. Uh, just saying, do what you want, you know, don't let me tell you what to do, but just want my advice probably shouldn't do that uh, and I'm just gonna show this for uh, uh, just so that you know because I've seen people who don't know this uh, there is actually a hidden <laughs> there's a hidden function that is not given to you called awake and this actually happens before start so this happens awake happen oops Awake happens immediately when the level starts, right? So start happens, uh, so it's awake, start, and then update, right? There's even, there's even like late start, but just don't, don't worry about that. Those are the three ones you need to worry about. If you want things to happen before other things, you can definitely count on those to keep them separated for you. So in every single object in the game, if you have something in awake, right? I have the right syntax. <laughs> uh, that means that anything that happens here uh, is definitely going to happen after the stuff that happens in Awake. Uh, I think that's enough on that, especially considering we are not even going over this right now. I've kind of strayed off course. So, we want to create a vector 3, and we want to make it public so that other objects can access it. So we want to go ahead and do public. Uh, just go down to vector 3. Oh man, I haven't used mono develop in a while. Uh, this is nice. Having it finish stuff for you, that is... Oh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna switch back to this. I've been using so something else that's not 
not as satisfying. So we want to make a vector 3. That just means that it is a uh, three-dimensional position that we are doing. And we want to do this as, we'll call it, oops, not a check. We want a checkpoint position. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about proper syntax here. So how it usually works and how I've seen it done, I, you know, I, I, other people have their own ways to do it. You could do, certainly do it any way you want. You know, there's no written rule. But uh, when you write a variable, you usually put uh, the first word, and then when every, every word after the first word, you capitalize the letter so that people can read it easier and they're not having to kind of like read it three times in order to understand what's going on. But, you know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, your code, if you're the only person who's going to see it, nobody will really care. So, you know, you can do what you want. I've just worked myself into this habit. Uh, we're not even going to set that as anything right now. Uh, actually, that's kind of even a little bit long. We're just going to shorten position to POS, and we're just going to shorten checkpoint to check. So it's check pots, uh, which, you know, you get the idea of what it is. You don't really need to, uh, you don't really need to get too formal here. So uh, just check pause. That's all you need. You just need an empty variable. So we're done with this script. We're done. That's it. That's all we need. Uh, we are going to go to checkpoint now. Open up MonoDevelop, bring up checkpoint, and see if we'll bring up player for us also so we can see what we've done in here. So we want to make a new function. Daunting, I know, but don't worry. I'll guide you through it. That's why I'm here literally like I made this video just for this so you're gonna to want to make a new function and you're gonna do want to do void on this is all all every word is capitalized trigger enter okay and then once you do that just boop pop boop boop pop and pop and you got it all right and so when you do on trigger enter, you need to set up, is it collision or collider? It's collider. Yeah, there we go. You want to do collider and then name it. Uh, well, we know 100% that it's going to be the player. Like there's nothing else that should be colliding with this. So we're just going to go ahead and call that player. Actually, that might get confusing. Let's just call it... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just call him bro. Collider bro. All right. And uh, let's see. To make this work, we want to make an if statement. If statements check to see if something is in fact something. And if it is, then it does the thing that we tell it to do. So, in, in fact, there there are shorter ways to do this, but I'm just doing this in the most formal way possible, just so it's really clear, and you guys will get into like the good habit of doing it formally so that people can actually read your stuff without their brains exploding. Um, so we're going to do if uh, bro dot tag, uh, it's lowercase. Um, so the tag, do you remember that thing that we changed earlier on the player? That's the tag. So their tag is player. So we double equal signs is if it's equal to, right? So if bro dot tag, if the player's tag, is equal to player, right? Even though, you know, nothing else was supposed to be going through this through the scene, we might as well check to see if it's the player, just in case, like a freak, I don't know, a sphere comes out of the void for some reason. I should set that up. I might set that up. <laughs> uh, if uh, tag is player, then we want to go ahead and do uh, bro dot get component and we wanna we wanna get the player component. Player component is is the script over here, right? This is the player component. We wanna get this component in the person that collided with the checkpoint, which is uh bro, which we're almost one hundred percent sure is going to be the player. Um and so if get component player, we put those things after it. Dot 
tech plus. Oh, look, it cataloged it for us. Oh, I missed this. I missed this so much. It's so easy now. Equals, we're going to make, uh, we're going to make the check position equal uh, transform dot position. Because we want, this is going to go on the checkpoint, right? The checkpoint script is going to go on the checkpoint, surprisingly enough. So we are going to want to make the uh, check position inside the player script equal to the checkpoint uh, location. So where that checkpoint is in space, that is where the player will spawn when they die. Uh, yep, that, that was pretty easy. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and close this. Ooh. Yes. Save and close. I forgot to save. That's something I always do. What is this? 18? Checkpoint. 18. What did I do? What did I do with line 18? Tell me, Unity. Line 18. Expression denotes a type or a ver. What did I do? What did I do wrong? Hold on. I'm gonna. Oh, that. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check some other code I did. Just to see what I did wrong. Trade. Oh, do I need to. Why do I even have this here? I don't need that. Um. Trick dot tag, right? Player. I did that right. What did I do wrong? Oh, wait. Glider, grow. What did I do wrong? Oh! You know what I did wrong? I'm an idiot. You guys are all probably screaming at me right now. Save. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, oh boy. What did I do? Okay. No, I'm good. Okay. So what I did is you need to put quotation marks around it. Because I'm, I'm an idiot. And I didn't see that. Sorry about that. Uh, you were probably screaming at the screen just seeing that. And every time you make a change, control S, control S that shit. Make sure you save it. I'm sorry for the language, but you know, it's important. So do it. Um, that should go away. Perfect. Now we open Death Pit. Tell me, Death Pit, what do you have in store? Fix everything up to the way I like it, just because I am a freak like that. All right. And all we want to do is we want to do another on trigger enter, right? So void on trigger enter and will glider the the um bro Sidon? Bro Sidon. King of the Brosham. Gonna go ahead and we want to go ahead and go to uh, row Sidon. Oh, first of all, we want to check the tag first before anything. So row Sidon uh, dot tag. Quotation marks, player, and that. Go ahead and now for short if statements, you don't actually have to do the curly brackets, but I'm just a, a neat freak, and I like to do that. Uh, bro, Sidon dot transform dot position equals. Rosidon dot get oops get component 
player. Get that player component. And then we want to get check position. Right? So that means that basically for Poseidon, the thing that collides with the uh, death pit, uh, its position, transformed off position, is equal to uh, inside the player player script that we've got here, check position. So basically it's moving to where the player uh, where the player checkpoint is. So that should be done, actually. I think we're done here. Save, save, save. All right. Everything should be working. So now we just take the scripts. I like how I like how it tries to change its name whenever I don't want it to, but whenever I need it to, I can't get it to do that. So put death bit script on death bit, checkpoint script on death checkpoint, player script on the first person controller. Crazy, I know. So everything okay on this? Lighters on is a trigger. Checkpoint is trigger. Whoa, that was close. We almost didn't do that one. Haha. <laughs> Who would have guessed that I would mess it up? Okay, here we go. Okay, it's over here. And it works. We did it. That we oh god, I didn't mess it up. Thank Jesus. We did it, guys. We made a checkpoint. Aren't you proud of me? Mom, I did it. No hands. I was typing with my feet this whole time. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm probably going to put up a little splash screen here with something or another. Uh, if I don't do it right now, it's going to be in future videos. Annotations all over the place. Literally everywhere. Look, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. They just keep coming. I don't know. I don't know who keeps doing this. So, uh, I hope to see you guys later. Watch my other videos, please, when I make them. This is the first one, so 